William Makura was a traffic officer for over two decades in Bolokwani, Limpopo. Now a pensioner, the soft-spoken lone figure enjoys life at a slower pace, tending his garden. But something he heard on his favorite radio station would shatter this peaceful existence. Do you want to make money with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Vault, or by electric cash? Now with 50% extra benefits. Three years ago, William was looking for ways to stretch his pension when a scheme advertised on Tobela FM caught his attention. It promised that with a small investment through Bitcoin, he could make guaranteed returns. I went to a talk. Mm -hmm. They said, when you invest that in 12,000, mm -hmm. Uh, month end, you will end 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, so I say, no, no, this is a good thing. So in went his first investment of 24,000 Rand, and days later, he added more. On the 20th, August 2020, I, I deposited 82,000. 82,000? Correct, yes. Where was this money coming from, Dr. William? I was a pensioner. Uh -huh. Yes. So you use pension now? Yes. 82,000. Presented by popular SABC radio hosts Sebasa Mokhale and self-made millionaire and author Mpodagada, it was this highly persuasive seminar that sealed the deal. And he wasn't alone. In Johannesburg, electrical engineer Elphis Makolani was in the middle of building a dream home for his family back in Limpopo. The father of three and his wife had saved up over 200,000 rand to complete the construction. He too attended a seminar and the sales pitch was convincing. He joined in Finyam, nearly 285,000, nearly taller after three years, after expiring contract. He took 285,000 back, plus every month, he has a profit, their interest, they are less than 30,000 every month for a period of three years. The earnings sounded great and few risks were spelled out. So 34-year-old Sir Lobonoko also signed up for an investment that would help him start a business and acquire a home for his growing family. No one could resist it, the, the amounts that they were promising. If we uh, like, invest uh, uh, 235, mm -hmm. you will be getting um, 50,000 uh, monthly for the coming three years. Yes, uh, to, to an extent that I even uh, had to ask a question that um, what, are you, what you're saying there is it, are you talking about guaranteed amounts? Mm -hmm. And then him, Sabal himself said, yes, it's guaranteed amount. When you went into that seminar, did you know anything about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? No, I was a bit loose. I just had this Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, is making people wealthy. With cryptocurrency, the road to riches is paved in gold. With wealth at your fingertips and so many self-made millionaires, no one wants to miss out on the gravy trade. But while cryptocurrency has made many people lots of money and disrupted the financial world in the last decade, it is unregulated, there are no accounting standards. On top of that, the crypto market is highly volatile. Even the most experienced investor can be undone overnight. In this market, Mokhale and Dagada fashioned themselves as cryptocurrency hotshots and set about recruiting investors. Flyers were splashed on their social media pages and adverts were on regular rotation on Tobela FM. Free exclusive presentation with myself, Sebasa Mokhale. The 23th of the 25th, June, 12 o'clock midday. Sebasa Mokhale is a drive time radio host who's got thousands of listeners, so he's a trusted and a familiar voice. So it's no wonder that his cryptocurrency schemes to his investors would seem credible and even lucrative. Mukhale and Dagada were intermediaries, marketing the investment products and services of Mining City, a global Bitcoin mining platform founded in 2019 that claimed to be the world's most successful mining community. Bitcoin mining, the process of finding and creating new Bitcoin using a series of computers and software, is extremely pricey and energy intensive. Bitcoin Vault was just one of the investment projects that Mokhale and Dagada championed, where investors were sold different packages, the most lucrative being the Platinum Package, where a 200,000 Rand deposit would yield higher returns for a period of three years. In late 2020, Silo invested 
235,000 rand. I got the money from my savings, the child savings as well. I took everything that uh, I was saving for the children. Once the lump sum was transferred, Sillo expected his first payout. How much did you get in the first month? In the first month, absolutely nothing. Second month? Nothing. Were you panicking at this time? Ah, uh, not really. I wasn't you're still, you're still confident? I was still confident because they have a group chat. The things that they used to say, you think I know. I'm still on the right track. Mm -hmm. The road to riches was starting to show cracks, but Silla and many others were still trusting the promises. Internationally, though, financial markets were raising alarm, and governments were banning crypto mining platforms like Mining City due to its high electricity use. I put in trusted reviews, Mining City, and immediately uh, the reviews came back saying this is a Ponzi scheme. Attorney Maurice Crespi specializes in cryptocurrency and digital technologies. He looked into the schemes marketed by Mohale and Dagada. Firstly, they do not appear to be uh, crypto experts in the mining uh, field. Uh, mining is very, very different. You're not buying crypto. You're actually paying a company to mine uh, crypto on your behalf. Further red flags would be just the mere fact that they promised these returns. Now, if you, pro you, if you promise these returns, you've got to ask yourself, why is the company itself not actually investing in these returns? Why is it that the company requires clients to actually invest um, to make uh, these returns as opposed to them making them themselves? We sent a list of questions to Mining City, but there's been no response. Silo's dream was crumbling. Unemployed and now in serious debt, he was forced to move back home. He couldn't even afford to buy clothes for his 11-month-old son. Uh, I'm using the, the, his sister's clothes because I still had them. We set off to Limpopo for answers. But Sabasa Mokhale wasn't broadcasting as he usually does from the Polokwani studios. We pressed him for an interview. So we just received an email from Sebasa while we were out shooting and he says, I honestly don't see the necessity of an interview since every person who invested in this business was given a clear presentation of how it works. Our search continued in another part of town. This was Sebasa's business premises. Investors could walk in and get technical assistance or assistance with their accounts. They had an open door policy, but without warning, they moved out and furniture was removed. At the office, I ran into the landlord who said Sabasa has been struggling to pay rent. Did they tell you why they're leaving or did you just gave them notice? Um, financial, financial difficulty. Mpodagada equally didn't respond to our emails, so we called his office. We were iced out by one of the secretaries. Okay, because I just spoke to him and he said, um, he told um, the previous assistant to just say no comment, I can't see on behalf. So I'm not sure if they did it. So we called again, but it was clear that Dagada would not speak to us. Okay, it's a tricky one, yes? I don't know. Me, I'm just an employee. What steps can aggrieved investors take to try and recoup their money? In my experience, an aggrieved investor will hardly ever get their money back. And, and that is why we say to people, stay away from non-registered investment products. Brandon Topham heads investigations and enforcement at the Financial Sector Conduct Authority. The, the problem with the crypto assets worldwide is that it's a new technology mm -hmm. and a regulation can't just run into something blindly. We are working hard at it for the last uh, two years. Uh, I believe that the first set of, of, of legislation in this regard should be coming out to the, uh, imminently. After a year of trying to reach him, Sibasa blocked his investors on WhatsApp and they say he ignores their calls. And here was this. These are the, your conversations with him? Yeah, this is the conversation I had with him, uh, showing him that all these things that they're, 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 they're dealing with are scams. Yes. Yeah. I did my research. I took... Silo, but this is the research you are supposed to have done before in Tanyuobu. It's very much difficult if it's someone you know and trust. Yes. Disenfranchised, the investors have had no choice but to pick up the pieces of their lives after the catastrophic losses. At least 140 investors hold out hope that they might be compensated as they continue to wait for answers.
Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.